How does one pay tribute to greatness? How does one remember courage? How does one honor sacrifice? I asked myself each of these questions when Councilman Bond asked me to bring remarks on behalf of my aunt, Ruby Doris Smith Robinson. Although I do not feel worthy to speak on her behalf, I am honored to stand here today as a product of all that she lived, fought, and died for. My memories of Ruby Doris Smith Robinson are shaped through the lenses of others. She was only 25 when she died, some three years before I was born. Despite her physical absence, her life and her legacy have always loomed larger than life for me. It's no wonder, though, because I have been told that she lived life larger than life. You know the Ruby Doris stories better than I do. Remember the time she went to Jim Crow, Rock Hill, South Carolina to demonstrate knowing that she would be jailed for over 30 days? Or the time she protested in segregated Mississippi and shared a single jail cell with other 23 student freedom fighters for weeks? Or perhaps you remember when she and other students were arrested in Atlanta and when asked her first name, she responded, Freedom, and when asked her last name, she said, Now. Or maybe you were there when she boldly confronted Governor George Wallace on the tarmac of the Atlanta airport. Or you may even recall the one-woman sit-in that she staged in New York when she and Julian Bond and John Lewis and Fannie Lou Hamer were on their way to visit King Ture in Africa, and she and other members of SNCC were told that they were being bumped from their flight. Yes, you know the stories better than I because you, the students of the movement, were there. It has been said that Ruby Doris's attention to detail made the dramatic moments possible. Behind every march, there was a planner. Behind every demonstration, there was a leader. Behind every bond posted, there was a fundraiser. Ruby Doris Smith Robinson was all of those things and more. To some, she was a loved one. She was a daughter. She was a wife. She was a mother. She was an aunt. She was a sister. She was a friend. To others, she was a co-ed, a co-worker, an organizer, an activist, an agitator, and a leader. To all, she was dedicated, she was bold, she was brilliant, she was fearless, she was a warrior. When her work with the movement interfered with her studies at Spelman College, she dropped out of school in her junior year to devote herself full-time to the cause. She later returned to complete her studies, all the while juggling her duties as a wife, as an expectant mother, as a full-time staffer with SNCC. She was simply amazing. To many, her life and commitment to the civil rights movement are but a footnote in history. But to those of you who struggle with her in the name of freedom now, I am sure that you would agree that in just her 25 short years of life, the passion and commitment she gave to the movement changed the course of history and changed this world. As the first and only female executive secretary of SNCC, Ruby Doris confronted racism and sexism with a boldness that made men and women alike fear her and respect her. My mother-in-law, I think, described her best when she said Ruby Doris was on fire. She was fierce. I've heard her described as a woman before her time. She sported an afro long before it was popular to do so. And she chanted the, the phrase black power long before the country embraced the term. And she believed that our African ancestry was key to enduring self-esteem long before it became a fad. I don't think she was a woman before her time at all. I think she was a woman who transcended time. She had no way of knowing that her days on this earth would be so few, but she, like so many of you students of the movement, certainly disproved the theory that youth is wasted on the young. Even as her body betrayed her and she lay dying in a hospital room, I've been told that she barked orders from her bed in an effort to keep the movement organized and alive. Some say she died of cancer, and others say it was sheer exhaustion. Whatever the cause of her death may have been, we are here today because Ruby Doris Smith Robinson lived. Well, my Uncle Clifford, Ruby Doris's husband, was dying just a few years ago. His last wishes were very clear. He didn't want a funeral. He didn't want a memorial service. He simply wanted his ashes sprinkled over her grave. He simply wanted to be with the woman who he had loved and lost some 40 years ago. It was then that I truly came to appreciate the phenomenal woman that she was 
and the impact that she had on so many lives. When I asked my cousin Teray if there was anything he wanted me to share on her behalf, he said no. Just going on the record with her name will help her be remembered. So how does one pay tribute to greatness? How does one remember courage? How does one honor sacrifice? Simply, we must remember and we must say thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman Bottoms.